percevoir une retraite qui est ah, there, uh, supérieur, il me semble, welcome to my Donc workshop, le nouveau my dungeon. De Pedro Sanchez uh, a, semble-t-il, trouvé un compromis avec... Sorry, this is a handheld camera, phone, phone camera, used more as a camera than it ever was as a phone, but never mind. So I'm going to turn the volume down, you can hear the French lady talking in the background there. Uh, that's right. Okay, so what I wanted to, sh to tell you about here is when dealing with radios that have a hot chassis from Europe, the tube types that you're involved with over here. So the first thing, if you come down over here, you'll see this is the Philips. It's a, called a Filetta BD274U, but uh, a lot of the hot chassis type radios are going to have the same thing. So the first thing that you want to know about is that in Europe, though, these radios were built to operate on 220 volts. However, there is a 127 volt selection as well. And what would happen is if you had to select the 127 volts, you'd actually be a little bit better off as far as generation of heat inside of the cabinet is concerned. Because what you would be doing is you would be bypassing this big dropper resistor over here. When you're on 220 volts, you've got to drop some voltage across this resistor. So that's the beginning of that. Now the next thing is, let's have a look at the tubes. We have one there in the back, two, three, four, five, six tubes. And these tubes are all prefixed, these are all European tubes, they are all prefixed with a U, that is a UY85, this is a UL84, which is the exact twin of the, well not the exact twin, the ugly twin of the EL84, UABC80, UF80 or UF89, I can't remember what this one is, one of the two, that is a U, it's a UCH80, uh, UCH81, and that in the back over there is a UCC85. Now these come in the E series as well. You were, you'd have an EY85, EL84, EABC and so on. But the U prefix tells you that the heater filaments, sorry I'm not aiming this nicely, oh these tubes are beautiful, look at that. Okay, the U prefix tells you that the heater filament is a 28 volt DC heater or 28 volts heat, uh, heater not 28 volts DC just a 28 volts heat. so if we look at these tubes 28 28 28 28 28 28 so that is 6 times 28 which is 130 volts which is kind of close to 127 volts so what happens is your line power comes in. Let's say that you are actually going to use, to keep it simple for the beginning, you're going to use 127 volts. That means that you can take this line voltage and then just connect all six tubes up in series, at least the, the heater filaments, and just use your line voltage to directly, in series, power the heating circuit. This is exactly what happens. Problem is now, with 220 volts, we have doubled or effectively almost double the voltage. We need to get rid of, just shy of, of 100 volts. We need to get rid of about 200 volts. Uh, 200 volts, excuse me. About 90 volts. So that's where this big resistor comes in. 90 ohms, uh, what's it? Oh, it's, oh, it's a series of resistors. It's a tapped resistor, 90 and uh, 150 ohms. But anyway, what we do over here is we now dump the excess voltage across this resistor in series with all of these tubes and I've actually measured the resistance of the filament of these tubes it sits at about 28 ohms which is kind of nice 28 volts 28 ohms and that's there you have it so if I want to lose about 90 volts what do I need 90 ohms and I don't know if you can see that it's a little dark but that there is a 90 ohm portion of this resistor, the dropper resistor is 90 ohms. So pretty much one ohm per volt that you want to get rid of is getting dropped over there when you're in the 220 volt selection. 
Now, as you know, hot chassis radios are naughty. So, always be very, very careful. That's why I have this wooden stick when I'm touching on things around here. Always be very, very careful when making contact with the chassis. I actually even have a set of uh, mechanics gloves. Those uh, I'll show them to you if I can find them at short notice. Let's see, here we go. Uh, my wife's been using my other pair. I have loads of these lying around. But anyway, these are the dirty ones. Uh, but you can see, I have a clean set just for doing this work. But uh, I think I put them somewhere else. I don't know where. But anyway, they kind of take the shape of your hand, and now you can safely touch and work whoops safely touch and work here but even even then only use one hand at a time when touching on the chassis or touching on any other components to protect yourself remember that when you work with tube radios and in most especially with this type of tube radio which has no input power transformer it only has a, uh, a, a direct feed to the rectifier tube and to the heat elements and then it has d the dc going also directly to power the, the, the anodes of all of the tubes uh, the plates so yeah you got to be real careful actually there's something i didn't uh, i didn't even point out and that is not six tube this is a seven tube radio because the seventh tube is of course the magic eye lurking in the back there this one over here is uh what's it um 80 um 80 yeah, it's, it's still kind of working, but not as bright as, uh, as as a new one would be. But for now, I'm leaving it there. So that's a little bit about the uh, European tubes. When you get a U prefix on a tube, then you are looking at a 28 volt d uh, 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 heater voltage. If you have an E, it's a 6.3 volt heater voltage. Uh, there's also a P. I can't remember what the P is. I think it's 12 volts. But uh, yeah, the, the, the European tube numbering system is fairly straightforward. So that's all I wanted to show you with this video. If you're curious, I can show you the front of my little filetta as well. I'm about to close it up. All the work on it's done. And uh, I've got a little bit of final cleaning. And the cabinets is starting to look a bit old. A bit tired but uh, we'll get to it so now let's turn you around and show your face to the uh, to the wide world <sighs> pretty little thing little filetta unfortunately it's missing one of the little brass caps for the volume control and it's on FM at the moment. Votre a little bit of a rundown. UKW, that is the German version for FM. UK means ultra kurz, ultra short, W, Welle or wave. So ultra short wave is the German name for FM. Uh, medium wave, Mittelwelle, KW, kurz Welle, short wave, and LW, Long wave, long wave, and then this one is kind of clever. You push these two boys down together, and you can use that TA torn abnema uh, pickup. So if you're going to connect a record player to the radio, you can do so. And that's it. Medium wave at the moment. Nothing really to receive. Wrong time of day. Just noise. It would be nice to have a nice big fat directional antenna that I could point towards uh, North America. Pick up all those interesting stations that are out there, the AM stations, medium wave stations. But uh, sometimes we get some uh, uh, stations out of uh, North Africa or uh, even out of the UK at night. But uh, at this time of the day, it's morning right now, nothing. Short wave, sometimes this time of day we still get some stuff. A lot of very strong broadcasts out of China. Might already be too late in the morning. Well, um, probably also I just need to connect up. Let's try it. Fine. We'll go to the back here. Yeah. And connect up my other antenna. 
my long wire antenna. Maybe then we get lucky. Doesn't seem like it's really willing today. There, the aliens are calling us. No, the language being spoken is German, but it's actually a Chinese broadcast from mainland China. Good old Chinese propaganda hitting our ears here. There's some rock and roll. And normally the reception is quite good, but wrong time of day. Long wave, two big powerful French stations always blasting in here. FM. The strongest station in our neighborhood here is about 93.3. But I'm not going to give you that. I just want to show you that the magic eye does kind of work. So as I'm tuning now on FM, Magic Eye is running nicely, but it's a bit faint. Now down in the basement, radio reception is not as strong as upstairs, so we've got fewer stations coming in now than, than I would like. But the, actually the radio works fine. And that's that. Uh, let me go back here. And I'm going to switch that off so that it, Mr. YouTube doesn't give me any copyright infringements. So that was a, a nice short little video of all 11 minutes, 12 minutes now. Just giving you some information on European hot chassis tubes. Thanks for watching.